Hello everybody, Robin here at Toadstool Tarot. A few months ago, I decided that I would tackle creating another tarot deck. One meant for use to newcomers to tarot, that they wouldn't have to struggle with a little white book or even a big fat book to understand how to read the cards. And so I decided to create a uh, majors only deck, 22 cards, that um, had single words on them that corresponded to each of the major arcana. So that right out of the box, one could read with these cards. And so I've called it the Word Tarot Oracle because it's both a tarot and an oracle. You don't really have to know how to read tarot to use it, as long as you can in interpret the single key word that I've supplied. So these are smallish cards. They are um, about bridge size. They're on um, sort of a seasoned looking um, ivory color card. They're made at make playing cards. They're um, a standard smooth finish card, which has a, a slight sheen to it. I particularly love these uh, kinds of cards. They have a real slick and slippery feel to them. The size feels nice in your hands. These are the cards, um, the type of cards, or the type of cardstock, and the size that I used for my open face uh, tarot deck. So, like I said, it's called the Word Tarot Oracle. This is the second edition. Uh, made in 2023. The first one I did in the fall 2022 and I wasn't entirely content with the words, the keywords I had chosen and since they're single words they're very important to choose the one and only word to represent a card. At this stage I'm still not certain I have the perfect word for each card because if you handed a, a Major Arcana deck to anyone and asked them for a keyword to each card, you wouldn't consistently get the same word from everyone. But I needed to find a word that uh, could incorporate more than one meaning to a card, but that would still be accurate. So, this is the word Tarot Oracle. These are the backs, very plain and clear. I also uh, numbered the cards so that if you do know tarot and you happen to uh, know the number of the card in the major arcana that corresponds, you can look at that on here if you're puzzled by the word you can look at the number and pursue that. You can look it up. I also included um, an extra blank card at the back and a little card of uh, Major Arcana correspondences. What I mean by that is the first card would be the Fool, which is zero. And you look up here and you find the uh, zero is the fool. And you find the, the name of the key word that corresponds to the fool. So this, in effect, is a little white book, even though you probably don't need a little white book for this deck. So the first word I have for the fool, zero, is explore. 
uh, if you know the images from the Rider Waite Smith, you know that the fool is carefree. That's another key word. He's out there looking to explore his world. Um, the second one, or I should say the first one, because the, the first one actually is zero number. Uh, number one is Manifest, which is the magician who has all the four tools of the um, elements and uh, makes things happen. He uses his skills. Skills is another key word, but here Manifest is grabbing any of the tools and making magic happen, making something come to fruition, make it, make it exist. Next we have number two, Search. This is the High Priestess and she's depicted usually uh, with a scroll or a book on her lap. She's searching for answers. She searches uh, her subconscious. She searches through the spirits beyond the veil. She's searching for an answer. Number three, we have Nurture, which is the Empress, who tends to care for and make things grow or make things happen through love and care, through the art or act of nurturing. Number four, we have the Emperor, who is the master of his land, his people, uh, their actions, rules, and laws. He's in control of um, the people or uh, laws and actions. Five, we have Mentor. This is the Hierophant who is someone with authority that we uh, go to or look to uh, to help help us figure things out uh, to lead the way for us to explain things to us in a way that uh, makes things more palatable for us you might say that he is the one that takes the information sought out by the high priestess and then sort of translates that and communicates it to an audience. Number six is partner or the lovers. This could be uh, in romance, it could be in business, it could be in any activity where you require an additional person um, to share the experience, whether it be work, investigation, love, uh, any sort of uh, activity. Number seven is direction. This is the chariot, which is move, a vehicle moving forward, a means of moving forward, but also uh, not just a straight line it could be left or right but it's progressing and it's how do you progress in what direction do you move suppose you suppose you're moving forward and you've got two different uh, paths and need to decide which one to take this is a, a card to think about that Number eight, Persevere, is uh, the strength card. And regardless of how much strength you might have, um, you use all of it to persevere, to overcome a situation, stick to it, follow through, bend it to you, your will, if you will. Number nine, the Hermit, is introspection. That is going within and considering your situation from all the information you have at hand. 
Number 10, I have risk for the Wheel of Fortune. <clears throat> risk often implies potential harm or difficulty, but you need to gamble or risk on something to, um, to win. Um, so a risk can be both a bad thing and a good thing. You have to take a risk in order to gain um, reward. Number 11 is equity. That's the justice card, trying to be fair and equal in all situations. Number 12 is the hanged man, which is suspension, which is uh, suspending your action. It's hanging suspended and reconsidering your position, uh, getting a new perspective by stopping in your tracks and looking around and seeing uh, how you relate to the world around you and what's your best course of action. Number 13, change is death. It's a transformation. It's a change from one state of being to another. Um, it's the end of something and the beginning of something else. Number 14, temperance is balance. It's the art of um, centering yourself. It's making things uh, work when they get off kilter, out of control. You want to bring them back to center, keep things in balance, uh, not go to too much of an extreme either way between options. Number 15, the devil is temptation. Uh, Whenever you are tempted by something that might not be your best uh, uh, course of pursuit, uh, you may be tempted by the devil. This again could apply to risk. You may be tempted to take a risk that's unworthy or, or unworkable. Um, Number 16, the tower, is surprise. Now, surprise usually is a good thing, but not everybody loves a surprise. And a surprise is always unexpected. And surprise can be both a good thing and a bad thing. Some people don't like surprises, and some people aren't prepared for surprises. But when a surprise happens, you need to be able to react to it, either uh, in a good way, in a difficult way. You need to move beyond it, uh, take what is revealed in that surprise, and figure out a way to continue moving forward. Number 17 is Guidance, which is the star of Polaris, the North Star was used by sailors to find their way when they got lost at sea. And that's what, why I've chosen guidance for the star card. Um, I think it helps us consider uh, looking for the best course of action, the, the best way to go when we're not sure about something. Number 18, I've chosen Puzzle for the Moon. The Moon has always been a difficult card for me to read. And the Moon is mysterious, and it's not perfectly clear. It's in shadow. It's in various phases. It goes through different positions. It's always a bit of a puzzle to figure out what the moon is saying. It's not quite a clear-cut answer. You might look at the moon card and have to puzzle things out a bit, puzzle out the meaning. In the RWS, we have a path that you're following. It's, you're following it by the light of the moon, dark at night. 
uh, one side of the path has a domestic dog, the other side has a wolf, so you have to sort of find a, a middle ground between instinct and reason. And that's always a puzzle to work out. So that's why I chose that, that word. Number 19, the sun, is clarity. Clarity uh, reveals all. Um, we all feel better usually when things are clear. There are no misunderstandings. It's the, everything seen in the bright light of day. You know what you're dealing with here. And usually sun is... Um, warm and approachable, uh, it's happy times, and what could be better than clarity? Number 20 is a revelation. That is the judgment card where all is revealed. If you flash your life before you, you see all the good and bad you've done, all the things you've had to deal with, over the course of it and you see um, what your perspectives and actions have been in doing things and you have or arrive at a revelation and lastly the uh, the world card which I have as achievement and achievement uh, if you're following the the uh, fool's journey this is the last card so you go from starting your journey to ending your journey when you end your journey you have achieved something you've experienced all the previous uh, cards and their actions and opportunities and challenges you have achieved something uh, you have the whole world in your hands um, and so that's my word tarot oracle and again all of those um, single word on the cards are on the little uh, the uh, major arcana correspondences card which comes with the deck so it's, it's kind of small print but i wanted to include all the all the definitions or all the keywords on one card so you have 22 of them there and and it's funny how the silhouette sort of looks like a vessel that kind of and or a torso <laughs> sort of a little bit like a container that holds all all the wisdom in it so um thank you for joining me and if you are interested in this uh, deck, it's on or about $13 on makeplayingcards.com. Of course, they have a kind of a hefty um, processing and mailing fee because these are made to order. And so I think that kind of doubles the price, but still reasonable, I believe, for a deck of cards. And there you have it, the word Tarot Oracle. Thank you for joining me today. I will try to include um, a link to where you can find this in the description below. Thank you all and see you soon.